following is not a dream or vision. It is an actual experience of a godly man, as he related it, who should have remained dead but was given another chance, or more correctly, had his life interrupted to reveal to him God's real truth about what real Christianity is and what Jesus really expects of all of us. The revelation given to Nikolai in 1996 in his own words. I came to America from Russia. I thought I was the first person in America who was holy and righteous. One year ago, in July of 1996, it was a nice sunny day and I went to a garage sale. When I came home, my wife said I had an appointment with an old man to look at honeybees. I wanted to take my daughter along, but she was stopped in the house and I felt like I couldn't take her, so I left her. I was enjoying my car. I have driven for many years. I don't know why I didn't stop at the stop sign. A person behind us said it looked like we just sped up when we should have stopped at the stop sign. I hit a truck that was crossing the highway. They took me away like a dead body on their truck. Maybe they thought I would die anyway. I was in the hospital one month and 21 days. I was in a coma 19 days. For four days the doctors worked to put my body back together by the Lord's command. On the fifth day three of the doctors gave up, but the fourth doctor wouldn't. He said, no, I won't leave him. All their machines worked to keep me alive. My wife didn't know if I was dead or alive. On the 19th day, she saw my toe move. It was impossible for me to stay alive. Only God could do this. Two days before I went home from the hospital, I remembered everything that had happened to me while I was unconscious. Right after the accident happened, I heard two voices talking over me. One said, it's all done for him, let's go. The other said, no, we can't leave him. The doctors will work on him and whatever they don't do right, we'll fix it. I didn't see them, but I heard them. Then they took me by the shoulders and we started to fly upwards very fast. It was so fast that it was hard for me to breathe. Then we came somewhere where I felt very comfortable in my spirit. They set me down on something like ground. I was in the spirit. In my spirit I saw a big long barn or warehouse. I stood next to the door which opened by itself. Next to me I heard a voice that said, go in. I looked and saw a man standing next to me in white. He was very tall and very beautiful. I said nothing and he didn't repeat what he said. When I went inside there were shelves on both sides of the walls. On the shelves I saw lots of clothing. There were many different kinds of used clothing, not new, but the same kind of clothing you see in stores on this earth. In the middle of this building, I saw a long table that had many boxes on it. On the floor next to the table, I saw three boxes that were open a little bit. I looked inside the first box and saw all types of very expensive precious jewelry, wedding rings, rings, chains, and all sorts of ornaments. I didn't pay much attention to them and went over and looked at the shelves. I took down some clothing. It had many different symbols and pictures on it. I took another piece of clothing and it was worse, then another, and it was worse yet. They had men's faces and symbols on them. Another had pictures of animals. I understood that this clothing had pictures on them. On the right side was the woman's clothing, and on the left were the men's. All had pictures on them. I went back to the boxes on the floor and saw many expensive adornments. I opened the second box and in it were some very expensive brooches. I picked them up to see how pretty they were and found two that were exactly the same. They were so beautiful. I said out loud, what a good job the person did who made these. I heard someone say, oh do you like these? Do you love these? When I heard the angel say this, I threw them back into the box and said, No, I don't want this. I don't like this. At the same time, a horrible stench and smell came from the clothing and jewels. I couldn't breathe from the smell. I started choking. I asked the angel if I could leave because I couldn't breathe. He said yes. I began to wonder why it smelled so bad. He said, On earth, people love this smell. It's pleasant to them. They don't need God. They love the world, but this is how bad it smells to God. I asked, where are these people? The angel said, I'll show you. 
These people are going to the lake of fire. We went around the barn and saw a very wide, beautiful valley. I have never seen such a beautiful valley in my life. The angel said, By this valley these people go. In this valley was a wide road. The road was sloping down a little bit. We walked on this road. I don't know for how long. I saw nobody on this road. Sometimes I turned around to make sure the angel was still there and that he hadn't left me because I was on the wide road to hell. Then I came to a white line going across the road. I stopped there wondering why this line was across the road. However, I wanted to keep going, so I placed my left foot over the line. As I started to put my right foot over, the angel grabbed me and pulled me back very hard. This upset me. It was not done very politely. I asked him, Why did you do that to me? He said, Are you grieved? Do you know that if you were to move your second foot over that line, I would have no power or authority to pull you back? Past this line is the lake of fire, the point of no return. I couldn't see where the angel was pointing. I said, Why is it there? Who made it? He said, Jesus made it, and everyone who passes this point will not come back. The people who have jewelry and clothing you saw are over this line. Many are coming who are deceived. Suddenly a large crowd of people came walking down this road. There was so many people that they took up the whole road. They were coming fast in a very organized manner, each row in a line. I moved to the side. As they came closer, I moved over more so they wouldn't push me with them. They looked like they were having a celebration, so joyful and happy. People were clapping and waving white banners. As I looked at them, I saw that they were Christians walking on the wide road. I thought, I know these people. I have prayed with these people. Some were even wearing head coverings. They asked me, why aren't you walking with us? We know where we are going. We are the king's children. We are going to the kingdom of Christ, to heaven. I told them, Satan has deceived you. You are going to the lake of fire. But they didn't want to hear that they are deceived. They were just laughing and rejoicing and didn't want to hear that they were wrong. I watched them as they reached the white line. The first row stopped at the line. They didn't want to go over it, but because of the multitude of people pushing behind them, they got pushed across the line. Each line was pushed by the row behind them. After they were pushed across the line, they began to run to the lake of fire. I watched them as they ran to the edge. When they got there, they tried to turn around and run away. However, when they turned, they would lose their balance and fall backwards into the lake of fire. I would see their faces. For an instant when they turned around, they had such horrible fear and terror on their faces, such as I have never seen before. Each line continued to push the next into hell, all of them going to hell. I watched four or five lines go in. The angel said, Do you see? I said, These are Christians. I prayed with these people. He said, Come and I will show you who deceived and taught these people. Check part two for the rest of this story.